Welcome to Autodesk University. We're here today. My name is Yoshi Honda. I'm with the Director of Operations at USCAD. Uh, this class is a little different than you'll see in other classes throughout this, um, um, this university or this conference. Uh, we are going to discuss a lot of things that are going to help you um, probably more emotionally than anything technically. All right, so here we go. Uh, just a little background information about myself. I've uh, been uh, speaking here at Autodesk University since 1997. Um, been involved with Augie for many, many years. I hope all of you are also involved with Augie or in your local user group as well because it is a great source of information and there are lots of resources there to help you throughout making your, your um, CAD career even better. Some of the objectives that we're going to talk about today is a lot about getting a uh, getting you through the crazy house of being a CAD manager, a BIM manager, wearing all the hats that we have that are involved in all the different types of activities that we do. Uh, not necessarily someone who is, uh, excels in one area, but also it, we, are, we are people that excel in multiple areas. Um, and also we need to learn different types of things, like um, um, the hardest one is probably learning to um, give work out, or getting other people to help you with doing your job. Um, if you think that you can do the CAD management job all by yourself, uh, it will drive you crazy. So you probably need to find some really good power users that are going to be there to support you throughout, this, uh, throughout this, uh, this course of your tenure. A couple of things and some advice that I always uh, start off with when I, when I do this lecture is that uh, being the boss, like it or not, you know, the buck does stop with you. Everything that happens there uh, happens because of some direction that you have taken, um, but you are the boss, and like it or not, you have to remember that. Uh, that also goes for the people that work for you and the people that work with you. Um, your attitude um, can determine your altitude, really. If you have a great attitude, uh, you can really go far in life. You can really get the morale and the people around you uh, to uh, not only excel, but also um, push the rest of the people around them and get them excited about being there. And having a good working uh, environment uh, makes the world of difference for uh, your employees uh, and your peers as well. Uh, taking care of your staff, all the little things that you need to do to take care of your staff, your little immediate staff, the people that help you every single day, uh, those people that you turn to when you are in crunch time. Um, there's certain things that you can do for them uh, outside of financially, uh, that is very rewarding for them. Um, saying thank you very easily, you know, every day just thanking them for coming to work or thanking them for helping you out. Those types of things go a long way, taking them to lunch every once in a while or something like that. Um, employee morale, probably one of the most important things, and that's where all of this comes from, is being able to keep that employee morale up uh, very high. Um, this is another one. Uh, watch what you say. Uh, I learned this very early in my career as a CAD manager is be very careful of what you say to your employees or what you say around them about different things. It can really affect them as a person. It can f affect morale throughout the company or the department. So think before you say anything. Uh, do what you do best. So for example, if you're a good leader, a good organizer, or uh, uh, someone that's maybe very good in VBA, do those types of things. Um, find people that are good in other areas that are going to help you. Uh, if you know someone that's very good in uh, LISP and that's not one of your strengths, uh, leverage that person, use that person, use people with their strengths. Uh, people like to be able to be uh, helpful, especially when it's something that they know, something that they're good, good with. Uh, so you need to do the same. Uh, you need to make sure that uh, you do what you do best and not try to do things uh, necessarily that you don't do well. And, and continue to uh, have people support you in those other areas. Uh, the ability to change, which is uh, happening very quickly for us CAD managers and us BIM managers here, is our ability to change from one type of software to multiple softwares, from one platform to multiple platforms, to servicing uh, not only one discipline to multiple disciplines now with coordination and all those types of things. So your ability to change, your ability to be flexible, makes a big difference in um, the, way and the way your department and your company is going to go and how successful they're going to be, and also how the morale of your employees are going to be uh, when you have that ability to change. Um, expose your employees. 
and, you, and that's something that I've done from the beginning, and I think that's something that we all need to do, is we need to expose them to as many things as possible. Um, Autodesk University, virtual AU, um, local user groups, uh, reseller uh, seminars, training, um, any type of event that they can get some education. There's so much on the World Wide Web that they can grab uh, free, free education from, um, some very affordable education as well. Um, make sure that you expose them to all of these types of things. Um, being very well balanced, being knowledgeable in multiple areas are only going to um, um, make your life much better. All right? And think success. You always got to think success. I try to go into each situation and try to make it, even though it's, sometimes it's impossible, I try to make it a win-win situation. Uh, try to think successful. Um, those types of energies and that type of energy comes off of you. It goes into your employees. It goes around the people around you. And being uh, positive and thinking successful is, is, is very important. So there's three types of people in this world. Uh, those who learn from others' mistakes. And that's, that's uh, I think that's one of the things that I learned very uh, easily very on, um, early on was uh, I had a manager, I had a couple of managers at certain times in my career, and some were very good and some were not so good. And uh, to be honest with you, I kind of learned a lot more from the person that wasn't good. Okay, and the mistakes they made, I saw that, analyzed that, and realized that I wasn't going to try to make, I didn't want to make those types of mistakes. So that helped me as I got through that. So uh, learning from others' mistakes is very, very important. Uh, those who learn from their own mistakes, and I've made a lot of those too. And you need to continue to learn, you need to continue to grow, and you can't continue to make the same mistakes over and over again uh, because those are really just bad habits if you're doing that. Uh, so those of us that learn from mistakes, that's the other type of person. And there are those that just never learn. I think we all know those type of people. Um, sometimes um, they will change over, but very often they never learn from anything. I think we all have one or two of those people in our department. And um, we just got to continue to work around or work with people like that, realizing that uh, they have certain capabilities. Four basic rules that you need to do. Uh, one of the first ones is learn how to learn. As a manager, uh, a lot of times we're so busy leading that we never listen and we never learn how to learn. We never listen uh, to our employees. We never listen to open uh, ways of doing things. Um, we have to be able to do that. Uh, so it's very important, again, as a leader, someone who's uh, promoting um, uh, some type of management in the company, uh, we also need to learn how to learn. We don't all know everything, um, and we can't pretend that we do. Uh, so we always are going to learn from somebody, so always have that ability to listen. Look for passion um, in your work, uh, things that drive you to be successful. Also look at those that, um, um, things that you, you enjoy doing or those you find people around you that are good at certain things. Those people can be champions for you in certain areas. Maybe you have uh, one or two really good Revit people. You know, elevate them, make them... Uh, uh, if they have passion and curiosity for it, let them go. You know, ease up on the reins a little bit with them and, and let them go and experiment and learn from them and incorporate that to make everything that you can do uh, successful for your department. And, of course, play well with others. Uh, we have to play well with others, all right? Regardless of your personal opinions or whatever they might be with each other, um, you need to be able to play well with others. Um, it make, it go, like I said earlier, it goes a long way when you show appreciation, just saying a thank you. I made a, uh, um, a habit. I made a, a, a change in my life at, oh, about 15 or 16 years ago that every day when my employees walk out and if I see them leaving or they walk past my desk or my office, I, I, I thank them. I thank them for coming to work. And it was funny, you know, the first couple of weeks I would say, okay, uh, you know, Dave, and thank you. And... Uh, it would be like, for what? I mean, thank you for coming to work and working hard, and thank you for helping me today. And after a while, as the years go by, when I say thank you, I'm pretty soon they're saying thank you back. And then people are saying thank you to each other in our office. So um, appreciation means a lot. Being polite, being respectful uh, makes a big difference in your working environment. So make sure you do that. That will help you share information because people are more open. And obviously, it's going to make it a, a better working team as we do that. And the last one is to nourish both sides of your brain. Uh, I think you're going to hear in the next uh, few minutes here on 
you know, we use so much of our brain to do the technical work that we do every day. Do we really exercise that other side of our brain? Uh, are we getting exercise? Are we doing free motion art? Are we doing other ways to express ourselves so that uh, there is some balance in our life? Uh, we cannot continue to just work on one side of our brain and, 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 and do uh, computer-aided drafting work all day long. We need to exercise the other. So make sure you do that and make sure you promote that with your employees too, that they have a balanced life because once their life gets out of balance, then their priorities become different and things change in that, cat in, in that area of their life. So that, that also will affect you as a manager when those things change. So try to keep some balance there. And uh, I try to do some of those things on lighter things where sometimes we'll take people out to lunch or we'll do an activity uh, once a quarter or something like that to, uh, you know, try to, keep that, try to keep that balance going and keep the fun uh, involved. Whenever we start doing anything, uh, regardless of what it is, if I'm implementing a uh, new software or if I'm implementing uh, a, a new policy or whatever, I always go through four phases. And these four phases actually come from an implementation, Im implementation process uh, that we do with either Civil D 3D, Revit, uh, you name it, AutoCAD, whatever it might be, Inventor. And we, we go through this. And uh, I use the same process when I address other things in my office or other issues. Uh, the first thing is assess. You kind of got to assess what you're doing. Gather as much information as you possibly can about that. That includes people, asking people, interviewing people, um, all different types of things. The second one is the plan phase. Once you have that information, being able to plan out how you're going to attack that, how you're going to do this, whose responsibilities that are, what the timelines are, so that we can make sure that we're working towards uh, uh, being successful. The next one is the solve phase, which means that we're going to solve it. We're actually going to do the plan. We're going to do these things. We're going to hit the timelines. We're going to hit the goals. We're going to uh, see what um, we can uh, achieve, and we're going to move forward with the plan again. And then the last one is to confirm. After we are done, we always come back and reevaluate what happened. I like to call it debrief. I always debrief with my group after an event or a project or um, some type of major meeting. We tend to debrief afterwards to make sure, one, we're all on the same page. Two, we can fix any problems that we had this time so we don't have those again the next time. So these four phases, uh, regardless of what you do, um, implementation of software, implementation of training, implementation of any type of thing that you're going to do, these four steps will, also, uh, will make your life much easier if you will follow them. Asset, um, um, excuse me, assess, plan, solve, and confirm. We also now have uh, this Generation Y. And I, I needed to bring this up because there's a few things. Anyone born between 82 and 95, uh, so they're currently between 18 and 28. Okay, so pretty much anybody under 30 uh, that's employable, probably going to be in this generation. Why? Uh, it is a much different generation. Uh, they're very much into social networking. Um, everything they do uh, is going to be different. Uh, this generation of the workforce is going to be very, very different. Um, they're going to expect to be virtual um, everywhere, uh, office, working at home, uh, different types of things on the road. They expect everything to be virtual, being locked down at a desk, not necessarily the, the same way we traditionally did things before. Um, oops, excuse me. They also expect to be taught. Uh, they will have a skill set, yes. And when they get there, they are still in that uh, mindset of, well, now you need to teach me how to do this. And um, there are going to be leaders in that group that obviously move forward and are going to be uh, uh, more proactive in learning themselves. And those are great leaders to look forward to uh, having on your team. And there's also going to be those that are, I am here. You teach me what to do. I will do it. Um, and a lot of that is because they expect to have a personal life. Unlike, you know, the workforce of 15, 20 years ago when we worked, you know, it was not uncommon to work 60 hours a week. This generation of new people you're going to hire are not going to do that. Uh, it's a different generation. Uh, they do things fast and hard. They'll come to work. They'll work hard. Uh, but when it's time to go, they're going to go. Their social life is very, very important. And as we do this, uh, we find more and more issues, right? I mean, a while ago, CAD managers were shutting down instant messaging, weren't allowing people to get on the Internet, 
And uh, as you see in the last five or six years, all of that type of thing has changed where there is so much resources on the Internet, we have to do that. So limiting them on their social networking and all that type of stuff is really going to be a difficult task for you to manage uh, without cutting off Internet access to them totally. Um, so this is uh, at intel.com. Um, they, they have a little social media guideline. Um, I think this is a great link uh, for any of you. Uh, uh, you can also just go to in, intel.com and just Google, um, not Google, but intel.com and in their search area, just go social media guideline and it'll bring up a PDF for you. Uh, uh, and actually it's on an HTML as well. And it'll tell you um, some guidelines that Intel does uh, about social net media and, and the pros and the cons and how um, that works into your business place. And you can probably take that and modify it a little bit and educate or give your company some awareness on what the social media is. Uh, uh, requirements or guidelines for your office might be, okay? Because that is very, very important. We're moving into that age now. Um, experience is the name everyone gives his or her mistakes. And believe me, I've had a lot of experiences. So, um, you know, as you go through these experiences, it really determines on what you're going to do. Again, we talked about learning uh, from our mistakes in the past, moving forward, learning from other people's mistakes, um, you know, you got to continue to learn from your mistakes. As a CAD manager, you're never going to get people that tell you thank you every day. Really not. I mean, how many CAD managers or BIM managers, uh, I, I know I said earlier about people saying thank you, but come up to you and say, hey, thank you. Everything worked today. I had no problems with uh, um, any type of wall styles. Revit worked fine. I got work sets. I, I'm doing all these different things or whatever it might be. You never get that. People always come to you when there's something wrong. You need to fix something. Uh, it's one of those jobs where we kind of got to be like Teflon, right? It's kind of got to come off of you. You can't continue to take all of that in. Uh, but again, working forward and making sure that you learn from your mistakes, uh, that's what CAD management's all about. Believing in yourself. You have to do that. Um, does that mean that you can never doubt yourself? No. We all doubt ourselves at some point. But you've got to believe in yourself. You've got to also make sure that you have uh, the, the, the right mind frame, to uh, be successful, you've got to have some dreams, you've got to have some goals, and uh, you just got to come to work and work hard every single day. Again, do what you do best. Um, you know, that was a great saying. I, I believe it was one of the military branches of the Army or whatever. Be all that you can be. Uh, again, do what you do best. The things that you do well, do those things. Um, you know, and, and, and then... Promote the strength of the people around you to do what they do well. And hopefully you will gather a team that the puzzles fit together and, and you'll be able to all successfully be able to do something very, very well. CAD management stress. Wow. You know, this was one that, therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day as... Uh, each day has enough troubles of its own, and we all know that as CAD managers, right? I mean, it constantly feels like a lot of times, regardless of how proactive you are, uh, you're putting out fires every single day. Um, You've got to worry about the ones that, uh, and learn how to prioritize some of these as well. Um, that becomes something that um, you're going to have to learn over time, and that's one of the skills that best suits a CAD or a BIM manager is being able to prioritize. Being able to figure out what is more important than others, uh, look at the long overall picture, and getting those types of uh, issues resolved right away, um, and not trying to juggle everything at once. Um, a lot of stresses as a CAD manager, and um, you know it's a it's a unique job, and uh, there's no formal exact training to do that. Um, a lot of us were super users, or someone who really excelled or had found a lot of passion for the software early on, and we kind of got put into this role. Um, some of us weren't meant to be managers. Some of us were ma meant to be managers. Uh, it just, you really got to continue to uh, keep a balance, uh, again, and keep everything moving forward. And I cannot stress how important it is to find and create a successful team uh, that will reduce the stress for yourself, reduce the stress for the entire workplace, okay? Uh, remember, stress is contagious. So if your employees see you stressing out, they will stress out as well. Or they will get a negative vibe from you 
which then makes the office not a productive and cohesive and peaceful place to be. So make sure that uh, you either handle your stress very well, multiple ways to do that. You can lock your door, you can go in your office, you can just email people all day now without having to interact with them. Take a walk. Uh, again, nurture that other side of the brain. Go out, take a walk, do something, um, and bring yourself back into control. All right? Dealing with upper management. Wow, this is the toughest one probably. Um, you know, we're kind of stuck in this middle management area. Uh, for some of us, it's lucky technical officers are being moved up uh, into an upper management role. I think we're seeing uh, upper management buy in more into the computer-aided drafting, the BIM uh, building information process. Uh, they're starting to support that. They're starting to see that there needs to be a, a, a BIM or a CAD manager that's going to oversee these types of areas and, and help them. Um, but going in and dealing with upper management, the biggest thing with dealing with upper management is being able to speak the same language as them. Okay? Um, also remember that you need to go in business-like. If you want something, you've got to go in, uh, well, we need 10 more workstations. Well, you know what? Everyone comes to them asking for something. You need to show them how those 10 workstations are going to make them money. You need to show them return on investment on every time you ask them for something. Okay? Even if that return on investment might not be financial, or even if that return on investment might not be great profits, you need to show them this business process of when you do things. Once you start to show them that, speak their language, they will elevate you in their own minds, and they will start to take what you say much more solid. And the next time you come to them, they'll look and say, hey, you know, he thought this out. She thought this out. We're going to have to move forward with this if we want to stay with technology or if we want to stay uh, competitive with our, uh, our peers. So start at the top, which means, again, going back up to upper management. Uh, you need to educate them. Do they need to know how to start up the program and draw walls or lines, arcs and circles? No, they don't but you need to educate them on the process of why this is happening, why we need this, how this integrates with everything, why this is one of the biggest gears that keep their company running and making sure that they understand that, okay? Uh, you need to get the support from them. If they don't understand it, how are they going to give you support, all right? So you need to educate them on a certain level to make sure that you can get support from them. That will also allow you to get funding from them to help you do things, and then you also have to show, again, return on investment. Again, upper management loves to look at numbers. They love to look at how much something's going to cost and if it's going to benefit them or not. And if you can show return on investment and um, if you can plan out your strategies correctly, then you'll probably get a lot more support from upper management. But the key to upper management, again, is to educate them. And educate them does not mean come in when you need something to educate them about that process. This is an ongoing process where you need to educate them about um, the BIM um, technology almost daily. And if it's not daily, weekly. You need to educate them on new things. Point them to websites. Point them to uh, webcasts about different aspects of it so that they are uh, well-rounded. Do they need to know uh, great aspects about everything? No. They just need to have a nice common overall view to realize how much support it needs to run an efficient BIM or a CAD department. CAD standards and production. You know, uh, standards. We all need standards and policies. You know, when we first thought, talked about standards, we, we thought about, you know, the first thing that used to come to our mind was, uh, okay, layers, uh, name filing conventions, block names, those types of things, and not necessarily true anymore. Um, uh, yes, you know, in, in the AutoCAD uh, arena, it, it's true, uh, but those are the things that move to, uh, like, Revit or, or Inventor or whatever it might be. You know, the layering scheme and all that type of stuff is starting to get uh, identified for us. Um, these objects are identified, so they're much smarter. But we still need these policies. These policies and standards are very important. Um, one, how we're going to export these things out, how we're saving them, how we're archiving them, um, how, we, how are we sending them out to our disciplines. I mean, a lot of these standards and policies are still in place. Um, again, we've always talked about our CAD standards, our computer-aided drafting standards, 
uh, being a document that is not set in stone. It's something that evolves. It's time to go back, start to evolve this thing, put in things like social media guidelines and all those different types of things and how we interact with people um, uh, through the internet and through the World Wide Web. All right? It is not always fair. Yes, it's not. You know, um, kind of like that right there. You know, when it does hit the fan, it doesn't get distributed evenly. You're the one in charge. Remember, you're the boss. Okay? Um, so it's, it isn't fair. That's part of your job. You have to realize that. That's responsibility you take for being that, this manager. You need to make sure that you internalize that. You don't, re you don't react negatively to that. Uh, but you need to go out and find solutions for that. Uh, gather your team. If it's a discussion that uh, you're really uh, feeling unfair about, explain the situation to them. I think you'll get some good perspectives from um, some great users uh, and your peers that you uh, find that you work closely with. And then together you'll be able to solve um, what the problem might be. All right? Dealing with employees. Uh, we talked about this a little bit earlier about um, how contagious your attitudes can be. Uh, and unfortunately, a negative attitude is much quicker, is very, is very contagious, it spreads much quicker, uh, it's much more dangerous, it's easier to hand off to people than a positive one does, right? We've all heard about the, the, the ice tray, you know, and, and you fill up your ice tray with positive thoughts, you got 12 little spots of water to put ice cubes in, you fill that up. Every time someone gives you a positive thing, you fill it up. But you fill up each little cup for ice. And as soon as someone says something negative, it dumps all of it out. Right? So one negative thing can wipe out a bunch of positive things. It's hard to stay positive. You've got to, again, deal with that with your employees. Um, deal with them, um, not only in, in the sense of how things are going with work, but I make it a point to deal with them individually, the ones that are very close to me, uh, the ones that I depend on, how they're doing in their personal lives. I don't dwell into um, issues they might be having, but I do know their children's names, their wives' names, um, events that they're doing, uh, you know, and I try to stay current in, their, in, in, in um, some of the situations that they may be going through as a young adult or a parent or whatever it might be. And um, um, making that relationship with them builds not only loyalty, uh, but it also builds that, you know, obviously that bond and that trust. Uh, but it also um, uh, makes a difference to your employees, especially when something happens and you need them to come in or it's late or whatever it might be. Those types of um, things that you put into that relationship um, obviously are going to come back to you when, when you need some uh, support or help from them as well. Peer-to-peer, peer-to-peer. Do not surround yourself with yourself. Ah. Uh, that's a good one, right? So really, this social networking thing, as it goes, um, you know, back in the day, it started off as user groups. We'd all show up at a place, we'd talk to each other, uh, we'd learn from each other, and then we had CompuServe and Internet and, and, and email. Well, nowadays, you know, social networking. You would never think that, you know, some, you would learn something off Facebook, uh, but you do. Uh, people are constantly, uh, tw uh, Twitter or whatever it is, people are constantly sending you information uh, about that can be very uh, helpful for you. And uh, so don't surround yourself with yourself. Get out of your fishbowl and go out there and create relationships. Uh, it's a give and take thing. You've got to work on it. Um, the biggest thing you can do is learn from uh, events like this. If you're networking with other people, take that information back. To be honest with you, um, when I first started coming to Autodesk University, I learned way more from uh, my peers that sat in the audience than I did from the instructors. Yes, I took something away from the instructors, but as the year went on, I continued to ping the people that I met at the event, and um, they had worked out issues that I'm, fall I'm, I'm having now. I've worked out issues that they're having now, and we would transfer information or, or exchange ideas, and that was always something that was very important. So peer-to-peer, -peer, uh, again, expose yourself to as many people as you possibly can. Commitment to excellence. Uh, that's just it. You know, you have to expect excellence. Is uh, quantity better than quality? Uh, in my mind, no. You know, I, I, I'm very um, adamant about the work that goes out is a representation of myself and my department. And I will be very upfront with you on if 
I can't give you a quality at the time that you need it. Um, you know, if you have a deadline that needs to get out at a certain time or it changed, um, you know, the quality is going to, uh, is that going to diminish so I can get the quantity out? You know, you really need to sit down with that person and figure it out. Is it more important for me to show quality work at 80% than it is for me to give quantity of everything and that quality is very low? Uh, you need to be able to uh, address those issues. You need to be able to stand up for those issues and again, um, it really is a reflection of yourself and also a reflection of people that work for you. So don't just think it's yourself. There is no I in team. Um, and I, 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 I truly believe this, that as a team, and I've said this throughout this, this, this uh, seminar, that as a team, we all have different strengths. Each one of us brings better, um, stronger strengths to the table um, in individual areas. And even if we have the same areas, the knowledge base of that is increased or even validated, which is even more important sometimes. So it's important that uh, we not only uh, find a good work environment, but we also find a team that's a good team that fits. You know, and making sure that when you're out there filling employment or training people, that you're always trying to fill uh, those spots where there might be a weakness. You see someone with some passion, uh, and then we might not have someone in our office that can do VBA very well, and this person has a little bit of passion, push them there. And if they can, they can increase their knowledge in VBA, great. Bigger, 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 better piece for your puzzle. We've talked about uh, quantity, uh, quality, not quantity, again, and that goes back to your own individual's uh, uh, commitment to excellence. And just, um, I think that's in incredibly important. It, it shows professionalism. Um, I much rather deal with someone that's going to give me, uh, who's going to be upfront with me and say, hey, I can't finish this project on time, but the work that I'm going to give to you is going to be really quality. Uh, versus someone that says, yeah, I can finish it, and they give me a bunch of stuff that's just not good. Okay, so uh, let's, let's uh, be conscious of that and take that in everything we do, you know, uh, from our CAD standards to manuals to, to our peers and our relationships. It's the quality of the relationship, not the quantity of the relationships as well. Respect others for their abilities. Um, yeah, you know, and that was a tough one for me as uh, a manager in the beginning was respecting others for their abilities. You know, we would have mundane tasks that we would hand out to people to do things, you know, and, um, you know, it's always, you know, like someone would struggle in a certain area or whatever it is. You know, that's when I started building these relationships with them in different ways so that I could understand what their strengths were, what their weaknesses were. I could help them with their weaknesses uh, by doing education, awareness, and other things, but I could take advantage of their strengths uh, because um, basically respecting their abilities. I know what they're good at. These are their abilities. I'm not going to make them do something that they're not good at. I'm going to continue to leverage the resource that I have, and then I'm going to try to bring up the other side of it so that they're more balanced, or at least um, they can handle more things. But again, you need to identify their strengths and use them for their strengths. All right? Listen, and we've talked about this before uh, in the beginning, the ability to learn, the ability to listen. Uh, was a big thing when I became a manager was the ability to actually listen. People come into my office, talk about things. Uh, a lot of time they're complaining. And that's part of the job of being a CAD manager is deciphering through or filtering through what is complaint and what is valid. Uh, but laser your focus. Uh, don't be on your computer. Don't be texting people. Uh, when they come in to talk to you, you need to look at them. You need to let them uh, believe, even if your mind is wandering somewhere else, you need to let them believe that you are focusing on them. Uh, you need to listen. Investigate and be curious. Um, yes, ask questions. Ask good questions. If they have problems, they're coming up with an issue, ask why that might be. Think about uh, why the foundation of their, or what's the core of the real problem. That's what you're trying to do. So investigate so you can get down to the levels of what the real problem is instead of trying to take off little fires up on the top. Get down to the root of the problem. Uh, silence your tongue. Yeah. Hold your judgment. Open your mind. Okay? Uh, again, it's all a part of that listening process, right? Uh, take, take brief notes. Um, you know, I, I found this uh, in a conference that I went to not too long ago where um, when you go into a meeting with someone, you need to bring a pad and a pencil or a pen. 
And if you don't bring one, uh, the subconscious mind already says that uh, that person isn't interested in what I'm having to say. So regardless if you write anything down or if you act like you're jotting things down, uh, that makes a big difference in their subconscious mind. So uh, you need to at least have a pad and a pencil or a pen so that when they say something, you could take notes or whatever it might be, and uh, that will resonate uh, well with them. Um, elevate. Uh, you need to promote the other people. You need to uh, build them up. You need to give them some positive, some good feelings. Get them going. Uh, you need to get them up. And because obviously they came into you, you needed to listen to them. There's something wrong. You need to get them to feel less stress about that issue. So you need to elevate them a little bit. Okay? And note the nonverbal. And this was a tough one for myself as well. And I think a lot of people will find that this is uh, one of the things that are impossible. Is when someone comes in, especially if they're irate, irate, and they're yelling at you or they're mad, and, they're, and it's automatically normal for you to defend yourself, automatically normal for you sometimes to raise your voice or whatever it might be, or just the way you stand or the way you look at somebody. Uh, you need to be very, very aware of your non-verbal um, non signals that you are sending out. Uh, this is very, very important um, because people will read that. Okay. So some myths about leadership. Uh, this is something that a lot of people get mixed up about. That leading and managing are not one and the same. They, they are not. They are not one and the same. Okay. Leadership is about influencing people to follow you. Management focuses on systems and processes. All right? So remember that. All right? So if you are a leader, people need to follow you. Okay? Management is managing systems and your processes. Knowledge base. Hey, just because someone is really smart doesn't make them a good leader. All right? IQ does not uh, equate good leadership. I think we've all met some very intelligent people. Uh, but are they good leaders? Some of them terrible leaders. Some of them can't verbally even communicate with people, have social uh, issues or inept. Uh, but these people are intelligent. That does not make them good leaders. Also, on the other hand, uh, you know, a great leader needs to have some intelligence. <laughs> okay? So don't necessarily take the smartest guy and make him your CAD manager or your BIM manager because he's the smartest guy. He may not be the best guy to have um, influencing people to follow him or her. Ah, the misconception that you need to be uh, the leader out in front of the crowd. You know, um, like the saying says there up on the screen, uh, being first isn't always the same as leading. Yeah? So uh, when you do move on with technology, and technology is moving so quickly, you know, there's a huge difference between cutting edge and bleeding edge. Right? And we all want to be on that cutting edge, but not necessarily on that bleeding edge. Well, there's that fine balance between the two. Okay? Don't let technology pass you by and be afraid to jump in the game. But you've got to get out there and push that, le you gotta push that level of technology. You've got to use the resources that are out there. So continue to push to be out there on that cutting edge. Respond well. Remember your objectives. Engage the employees. Right? We need to share. We need to point out benefits. Offer proof. Ah. All these acronyms all do something for you, you know. Um, I find this one here, and I talked about it a little bit earlier, the win-win in the relationship. It's so important to have, to go into any kind of uh, response or conversation or solution for someone and try to find the win-win. Win-win um, for them, win-win for you, right? We both want it to win. And you know what? Any negotiation, any time you have to accommodate uh, certain things, there's always going to be people have to give one way or another. If you... You know, try to think of the best way to get the best out for both people. I think both parties will be happier and people will respond much better. Yeah, you know, how we respond to different types of things uh, are very in uh, infectious. Our tone, the way we act, you know, we talked about that a little bit earlier, um, our posture and so forth. 
So uh, make sure that you, you, you pay attention to those types of things. Um, and also remember how people learn. You know, some people learn auditorily. Some people learn, you know, tactily. Um, you need to figure out the learning styles of the different people that are with you and how to teach them and how to educate them. Um, there's, I have some users that are, are great. You can show them once and they pick it up. There's other users that I have to show them books, they have to read it, and then I have to do something else and help them. That's just the way they learn, okay? And understanding their temperament. All the different temperaments of your learners are very important too. And when, you might need to identify best times to teach them as well. Okay, we have AM people, we have PM people. Um, being able to do those types of things. And understanding, again, the temperament of the person also that you're teaching, as long as, and as well as their learning style or their, the way they learn uh, is extremely important. How we can do this education and awareness? Obviously, a lot you can do in-house. If none of you are taking advantage of V-books right now, you should be. Great resource online. People can use that at any time. Obviously, brown bag sessions in your office to find weak spots or, or promote new things that might be coming out. Um, you can have it during lunch. People can bring in their lunch. You can do it for 45 minutes or whatever it might be so that we can promote these uh, different types of education. You can do those weekly, monthly. Obviously, lugs, going to your local user group meetings, going to Augie or participating in Augie online. Um, and anytime you're a reseller, your reseller should really be doing a bunch of lunch and learns or drive and learns where you come over and, or they come over and they help you with the product uh, maybe for an hour or whatever it is and they should be promoting these things for you constantly trying to get in there and educating your user base. Um, most of these, in fact all of these should be almost for free. All right. A um, couple of resources that have made a big difference for me. This is a book right here called The One Minute Manager. Uh, it helped me a lot with a bunch of things. Uh, realizing that people only want to listen for so long, goals can only be so long or else it just gets diluted. The One Minute Manager, great resource for you. Uh, the Red Bucket Strategy, another great resource for you. Um, if you ever find this book, I think you'll find that you'll really enjoy it. It's a small, short workbook. You go through it for 90 days. Uh, it really takes less than five minutes, or about, really only about two minutes a day for you to go through this exercise, and you'll find that it will create good habits for you uh, throughout this process. Um, a book that I found um, uh, spiritually um, uh, enlightening, and it helped me emotionally, was uh, Discover the Champion in You, actually done by a friend of mine who I met years after he wrote this book. Uh, this gentleman actually tried to save... Uh, his girlfriend at one point and actually fell off a cliff in Hawaii uh, and should have died uh, and didn't and has written a bunch of books about uh, your daily life and again going back and balancing that right with your technical brain and then your the other side of your brain as well the right and left brain keeping that balance books like this very short reads I read one page a day uh, takes me two minutes okay so by the time I have my coffee I've done my red Red book strategy, and I've also done my inspiration for the day. All right? Uh, success formula, uh, you know, all these different types of things. You've got to be able to, sh one of the biggest ones is uh, develop a su support network. The other one is shrug off setbacks because you can't allow that to happen for you. Uh, but always, always stand for your integrity. Okay? All right. Um, at this point, um, if there's anyone that has any questions or, or comments, uh, we can address those. Uh, you can always contact me at, oops, excuse me, you can always contact me at yoshi.honda at uscad.com and um, I'd, be free, uh, I'd be happy to answer any, email, any emails or questions that you might have. Uh, and again, I want to thank you all for being here. You've made a positive step in your, in your uh, direction and your career. And uh, again, thank you Autodesk for this opportunity to share it with you.